click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Welcome back friends. Welcome to the subject of machine design 1. In the last lecture we have seen the design aspects and formulae of bolted joints. Of course we have seen three different cases of the way the bolted joints are considered for the design. In today's session we are going to start with a numerical which is based on the case number 1 of bolted joints. So let us begin with. As you can see on the screen, the problem is given, the problem statement is given. They have said, select a suitable bolt for the joint shown to carry 12 kN load at shown. Now, this is the important formula, this is the important diagram where you have to see, you have to locate the given number of bolts and how they are looked. Now, this is how the load is acting, that is 12 kN. You can see the eccentricity is given 45 cm. The locations of bolts are specified. The bottommost bolt is at 40 cm and the topmost are at 4 cm. And that is how the locations are given. Now, if you see properly, there are only three number of bolts. And that's why we have to write down the given data. So, the given data, the first value P comes out to be 12 kN. Second thing we have is eccentricity E. The given is 45 centimeter that somewhere comes around to be 450 millimeter. We generally follow the IS system and that's why we are converting all the units into the simplest form that is millimeter. The next thing we have is the lens of the bolt or the location of bolts. Now you can figure it out from the given diagram that this is the location of bolt number 1. 2 and 3. Now the nomenclature is irrespective of the location. It's up to you what to give the nomenclature but the same nomenclature we have to follow throughout the numerical. So let us say that it is the first distance and that's why I'll call it length 1. Somehow this is the second distance so let us call it length 2 or length 3 because both of them are same. Bolt 2, bolt 3 and that's why Length 1 comes out to be 4 cm, mix it 40 mm. Length 2 comes out to be 40 cm and hence it becomes 400 mm. Apart from this, they have specified the material or it's up to us to select the material or use the given values. Now there are always two choices we can make. The material will be either given or we have to select it. Let me tell you that we are going to solve multiple problems in this particular section. So let us have multiple ways of selecting the material. In the first trial we are going to have the predefined material given by the problem definer. So this is basically the given material. So let the material be carbon steel. We know that randomized value for the stresses in carbon steel are the randomized value for the carbon steel are So that is the only value we have. Of course there are different factors of safety associated with the bolt joints. For the given application which is quite a simple application, simple loading they say, we can say factor of safety be 3 and that's why the allowable value of the tensile strength will be 225 divided by factor of safety. The value somewhere comes out to be 75 Newton per millimeter square. And similarly, tensile value will become exactly half of this. So it comes out to be 
37.5 newton per millimeter square the next thing which is very important is the failure mode now we know that the given bolts may may fail in principal stresses and shear stresses and that's why we have to find out the maximum value of principal stress and the maximum value of shear stress and the formula we already know and that's why we have to use the given values it comes out to be So friends, next important thing is to determine the stresses which are acting on the bolts. So there are two aspects. One is the direct shear stress because of the location. Of course, we have discussed this. And second is the induced tensile stress because of the tilting of that particular given joint. The first one is will determine the shear stress or shear force acting on one bolt. And that will be the total force divided by total number of bolts. So total force we have been given is 12 kilo newton divided by number of bolts which is 3. 4 kilo newton. In short, 4 kilo newton is the load which is acting on one bolt and which is responsible for its shear. And that's why shear stress will be given by the force divided by area. So, this is one of the important findings that is highlighted, which is the shear stress. Second thing is the induced tensile stress, which is again important. Now, we know that there is an empirical relationship to find out the tensile force, the converted tensile force acting per bolt. So, the expression is same into eccentric distance. into the summation of square of individual lengths from the tilting point. Now we know that tilting points are only two that is length one and length two or length three and hence it becomes 40 square plus twice 400 square. Upon solving we will get the answer. Upon solving this expression we will get the evaluation to be 16.79 Newton. Now this is the amount of force acting on one bolt per the given length in terms of length 1 and length 2 and hence we know that the maximum force that is going to act is the farthest most bolt which is your second bolt or third bolt and that's why I'll call force in tension or force which is tensile on second bolt force which is tensile on third bolt which will be given by this formula Ft into ft is this value into either length 2 or length 3 as we evaluate this we'll get the answer 6.714 kilo newton so that is the amount of force which is acting on second and third bolt which is the maximum force there comes the tensile stress which will be given by ft2 divided by a or maximum force divided by a the value will be same the unit will again remain the same and there we come across the second finding which is the tensile stress now using these two stresses we are going to find out the we are going to compare the answer with the allowable value there comes the failure criteria which is very important now we know that bolts may fail or the best suitable criteria for the bolts for the failure will be either maximum principal stresses or it will be maximum shear stresses or combination of both and that's why we have to compare both of them together there we go with the calculation of maximum principal stress and the maximum shear stress the formula is well known to us so as we substitute the values the values that we have are values were put by mistake now let's take the second page same formula we have now we'll substitute them in this manner 
the tensile stress we have obtained in terms of area which is We already know that the maximum value which is allowable is given. We have found it out to be 75. So, we will get this expression in terms of area because area is the only unknown in this case. So, we will get some constant. Divided by area. As we solve this. We will get value of area to be the value of area to be 114.43 millimeter square. So that is the area when we consider the failure criteria as the principal stresses. Of course, maximum principal stresses. Now let us go for the area consideration in maximum shear stress. The tau value we already have found out which is 37.5. When we solve this particular expression, we will get a similar value of answer A. As we evaluate this particular expression, we will get the answer of area somewhere around 139.27 millimeter square. So if you observe this properly, we have got two areas. Both of them are the cross sections of the bolt that you, that we need to select. One of them is uh, lesser than the another one. Now, there is one aspect that we need to understand. Just remember these two values. There comes this selection of maximum area. Now, students, we need to understand that area of cross section is directly proportional to the diameter. What do we mean by these areas is to sustain this particular tau max we need to have this area to sustain this maximum principal stress we need to have this area in short if this area is provided the product will be safe in principal stress if this area is provided the product will be safe in shear stress now somewhere there is a problem if this area is selected the product will not be safe under shear stress but if this area is selected in that case both of them will be safe for the product and hence for the selection of maximum area, we will consider for safety, maximum area will be 139.27 millimeter square. Now, there we arrive with the last step. We know that area will be based on the core diameter. This relation we already know. So, let us substitute this value. Area is pi by 4 core diameter square. And that's why area is equal to this expression. As we evaluate this thing, we will get this answer of core diameter somewhere around 13.32 millimeter based on this nominal diameter can be found out easily when we compare this nominal diameter from the PSG standard series of bolts available PSG 5.42 will get the answer for this selected material now, I don't have PSG with me, so you have to refer to the PSG 5.42 and there you will find nominal diameter which is available for the given range is equal to 16 millimeter. And hence, bolt selected is M16. So, this is the bolt which is going to be saved both under maximum principal stress as well as the shear stress. There we end with the numerical number 1. In next numerical, we will consider case number 2 of loading of bolted joints. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda.